Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 60 of the Coffee Club podcast. We made it. Today, we have a very special guest, Mr. Reed Fisher. Reed, how are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for having me, gents. How are the legs feeling coming off racing the big New York Marathon last weekend? <laughs> yeah, they're doing all right. Uh, definitely stick. Or st- st- <laughs> stiff and achy. Stiff like and achy. St- sticky would be sticky. the combination of the two. Yeah. That, that, that sounds about right. Uh, yeah. 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 Stairs are hard. Uh, getting, <laughs> getting in and out of cars is difficult, but they're coming around for sure. Like I was telling George on the way in, like I definitely feel much better today. Today's Wednesday, so it's like three days removed. Mm-hmm. I always feel like third day, things start to clear up pretty nicely. So I feel not like I want to go for a run today, but <laughs> fair enough. Feel, uh, How long do you take off? Uh, it's hard to really, cause after the trials, like that was when I fell. So I would like, I ran 225. So like my legs were okay, but I was just like really, like I had like road rash and I was kind of like beat up. So I spent like a week in the pool and then started running again. And then after Chicago last year, that was like two weeks before our wedding. So I really had like no reason to start running again pretty quickly. <laughs> and then after Boston this year, I ended up running us half champs, which is like three weeks later. That's which I would not recommend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound fun. At all. So I pretty much got like right back into it. So Jeez. this one will kind of be like I think kind of a happy medium where I'll chill pretty hard this week and then start running a bit. Very dependent. Next week. Yeah, yeah, very dependent yeah. for sure. Well, you got to get rid of a cross champs though, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've had a little bit of back and forth after. I didn't. I kind of forgot about it, but it was literally last week where we were talking shit about Tim. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? We? It was definitely just all me. It was. Yeah. Uh, it was hundred percent all. Me. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Trying to provoke Joey Bags to come yeah. out and just stuff. Uh, yeah, well, let's get you guys. Have, the sparks are flying. That's for sure. This is the thing though, because Joe the- Joe told me that if we can like. Just poke poke them a little poke bit. The bear, You've yeah. got the fire going, yeah, and then yeah. it's just going to be like all guns blazing yeah. in Austin. So no, it will be. Yeah, yeah. there's a uh, Tim Ag group chat's been been keeping their eyes Ooh. on the coffee club. Hell yeah! Okay. Hell yeah. I don't know. I think cross country is like our it's our blood. You know, like that's I mean, Tim I can say the same thing. Born out of cross country, so that's like it's kind of been okay. our thing. Yeah. It's showing up and beating teams. That was like the first country, the big so thing where you won be fun. Club, yeah club cross we club took down cross, WCAP yeah. and Hanson's that and is a bunch big. of teams that is, that is, that is big Morgan, yeah, with so. Morgan Pearson right yeah, yeah. the only thing that we have is the only thing we have pedigree but we haven't had results yet so we have pedigree I would say just none of us has NCAA run cross. cross no I agree yeah. Yeah. what do you think about this race cross have you run one three years so we're just talking mad shit we're just talking mad shit how about we up the ante and we race for pink slips I mean, I'm which, not racing, which, so I'll, I'll put, I'll put okay. everyone's car on the yeah. line. It doesn't matter to me. So. <laughs> not cars. I mean, literal people. We'll do a trick. Oh, okay. <laughs> so just human trafficking. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Right. Nice. That so sounds good. So if we win, we'll we get take Reed. We'll take Reed. We'll take Reed. <laughs> okay. And if you guys win, I don't know who you want, but you can yeah. take anyone from the men's and win. Right. I probably yeah. just the men's team since you're racing against the men's team. Right. Yep. But you guys can make a pick and take someone. All right. Deal. Deal? All right. well, I mean, we, we should take someone from the Moons team so Tori can get a training partner. But that would be pretty cool. Be, in be close fairness, we should take someone from the men's team. All right, you, so can, we'll you can take whoever you want. Yeah. yeah. All right. But we, we'll but we won't that. read. Yeah. You made that clear? We're taking read. <laughs> we need a we need Is a Joey gonna upset? Yeah, you need a marathoner. Joey's going to be upset because he, we didn't fight for him to take I, him. I would like to take Joey as well. Yeah. But I guess I we can't take more than one, right? If we I just, know. I mean, if we just up the ante, they, they, they can take two, we can I mean, take two. Joey's right. a lot cooler it's than it's me, for it's sure. It's so if you're going off that, then you gotta go with Joey. No, no, no. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll put that down on some paper and we'll sign some contracts. Yeah. We'll get that yeah. sort of in, in the back of an alley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get our lawyers on that on that one. Deal. But uh, we, we've been on grass in, in years. Ten man's out there doing wickets on the oh, turf yeah. this morning. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Dude, we're going to mess that. See, that does intimidate me. I guess it's starting to intimidate me a little bit. I'm, I'm starting to break a bit of a sweat when I see yeah. the wickets coming yes. up. That's what the wickets and guns. How do we get help yeah. you on cross country? The thing though. is, it's like we've got nothing to lose, right? Like, <laughs> you guys are like supposed to win. You're a bunch of NCAA champions. We've got like a bunch of NCAA second team honorable mention oh, guys that have yeah, just been scrappy. So. It's getting worse and worse. You know, it's like <laughs> starting to starting to go down here. Everyone, everyone loves an underdog. They that's, do. Uh, that's the thing. That Tim Man underdog spirit. You guys, I, you guys are the heavy favorites. I'd say. I so. do feel like people will be rooting for Tim Man yeah. compared to us. Well, for the that. thing is, like as we mentioned when we were talking shit about them last week, <laughs> is that there are actually like so many other teams as well yeah like, for sure like, even no, like i'm looking at race. like roots running i don't know who roots from roots is actually going to race mm-hmm. but i'm saying like 
if Frank, Frank Lara is there, like that guy's yeah, he's a amazing. Room. Yeah, like he's yeah. gonna be up there like crushing it. And you would think that he also like, has nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah, like there's gonna be so many people out there that are just so good and so many teams that are like pretty solid. So mm-hmm. so many just from Bo- the battle for Boulder Boulder supremacy. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Like I have no skin in the game, so I just get. To, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I want my team to win. But, like, <laughs> personally, I have no skin in the game. I love uh, it if you endorsed us on our yeah. podcast, <laughs> and then Tim Manchat blows up. Reese, yeah. Reese, Reese changed the lead. Of little faith. Uh, <laughs> but no, like last year we ran the cross camp race and it was like they were billing it as like, yeah, this clash of the Titans and then it ended up being like us versus Hansons. Yeah. So I'm hopeful that this year everyone won't just like bail at the eleventh hour and it'll actually be a lot of fun yeah. to watch as that's a what, spectator. That's what Ritz was just telling me the the top three he was like saying that there's no way that if you want to qualify for the ten K next year that you won't be there. Yeah, like, talking about sense. someone like that right, the, points the points are ridiculous yeah. yeah for sure I think if you win you get 1280 oh that's which a ton apparently is more than no, Clicker got amount. for yeah. coming ninth at Worlds and running 2730 yeah. something that's worth more points yeah, than yeah, that I've gotten, it was like 1180 I think for being top 10 or world major so yeah. compared 100 more points than that for winning cross yeah. games yeah. <laughs> that's it's crazy massive, for like, sure yeah. that's a lot of points in the line and Ollie wants to take them all I want to take them all <laughs> and not use them yeah. so last week on the pod I did say that I want to win <laughs> yeah. the cross race steal it from all so the UK guys the only thing I've done is just hammer long runs <laughs> mm. yeah which it's working really it's well working so really well however it's not an uphill canyon race I'm guessing yeah so probably not it's but. probably not going to work in my favor anyway but it would be funny if I took all those points and then no one gets them but you know, if my teammates are in the vicinity, then I just let them pass. Yeah, last year was a weird one because I think as soon as people knew that it was going to be at Mount Sac, like yeah, half of the people were like, fuck yeah. that, bro. Like, Why we've did seen, they do that? We've seen, it was so hard. That's the hard. I mean, it was also like a month after Chicago, so I was still just like not feeling great. But yeah, it was the hardest race I think I've ever ran yeah. from like a non-marathon perspective. It was just brutal. Yeah, this year feels coaster. very different in yeah. terms of not being at Mount Sac, being on like a nice grass course which actually i think none of us really know what the course is going to be like we mm-hmm. just have seen or heard that it's like grass fields around a school so hopefully right. it's not too bad and then yeah the fact that there are real points for the 10k on the line and yeah just like the build-up is being crazy to me because it is just a random cross-country race this is like so we make fun of jesse sometimes as well for like sound running meets and like trying to overhype them i think this one is actually going to happen just because like there's been nothing going on in our world mm-hmm. like race wise for besides the marathon yeah but like for us like oh, racing like yeah. nothing's been happening for us for yeah. two months this is our first race so we've been even though it's not actually that big of a deal we've just been thinking about it for right. so long in terms yep. of like that's our next race that's what we're training for and so it just keeps getting hyped up like the fact that we were already talking about it a week ago a month out from it like we won't we're not even talking about like the diamond league final no. a month out because <laughs> yeah. yeah. we, we got other stuff yeah. going on but yeah. this one is just the one race where it's like all right this is like got this long lead up to it so let's fucking like let's and, and definitely make it exciting the, the banter coming through they're talking shit it's gonna yep. make it better it always helps yeah. um i was hope- i was kind of wishing bauman was gonna be because they're not entered right the well, club team is entered but that doesn't that, right. that doesn't tell me anything jerry on the side yeah. yeah park city like oh you're flying out tomorrow to yeah. austin because if they all turn <laughs> up that would actually be crazy i'm sure they can't turn down that those points yeah, you wouldn't think. Well, who, who, well, okay, Grant doesn't need them, but no, maybe I would say the only reason would be if they, how confident they are that they're just going to go bang out the time qualifier. Yeah, true. But I still agree with you. I still think they will turn up for that reason. So, yeah, I think maybe Grant there. doesn't need it, but maybe Sean. Yeah, so I'm saying like Woody. maybe one of them needs it and they'll turn up. Karen, I don't yeah. know, some guys like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping uh, Baxter would be there to talk some shit, but he's, he's also it? claiming this marathon thing yeah. is an excuse to not run it. <laughs> That's weak. Again? I mean, okay, maybe pre-super shoes, but come on, man. Like, yeah. You're, yeah. you're going to be feeling pretty good in like a week from now. <laughs> <laughs> sure. That is one. So you never raced a marathon not in super shoes. Is that uh, correct? No, I've raced a half in not in super, just like old Adidas. Does Adidas that feel like, but... do you notice like an incredible difference in terms of like yeah, your oh, yeah, recovery? Sure. I mean, so I, that was my half marathon debut I yeah. did in Adios's, Um And then the next race, I was in super shoes. And so it's hard to tell, like, you know, the first time you run, like, a longer distance race, I feel like it just beats your body up way more than, like, the next time because yeah, it's a completely that's new stimulus. Well. But, like, it certainly seemed to help quite a bit. And, yeah. yeah, just, like, I mean, if you look at the amount of marathons people are running now compared to, you know, 10 years ago, like, it definitely seems like you can bounce back a lot quicker. Yeah. Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, like after Boston, I did turn around three weeks later and run a half marathon and it like wasn't 
an amazing result, but it's at, like, but it, you still wasn't, did it. it wasn't a bad race for sure. Like I was fifth at US championship. So in that regard, yeah, I think you can yeah. get away with it, at least in the short term, a quicker turnaround. So you like have no excuse to not actually yeah. race. Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Baxter, get to Austin. Yeah, he's coming. He's yeah. coming. Yeah. No, okay. I Stop wanna, claiming that. The one thing I'm also excited about is that after, I feel like everyone's going to be in Austin. True. Go out, we go, out for, we all... go out for a drink. Austin's a cool city. Austin is a cool city. Go out, hang Six out, have street. a drink. Just see all the running world collide together for a, for a big night in Austin afterwards, maybe. That Potentially. Will be fun. So that's, isn't the running event that weekend too? That oh, big yeah. like train show. So I'm yeah, sure yeah. Austin will be packed with just running people. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be fun. It's it going to be fun. madness there. Austin yeah, like is New always York just the craziest in. city. Like, mm-hmm. just it's it's one of those just massive party cities like Sixth Street, that the Dirty Six. The Dirty Six. Like, when I used to go there a lot, um, where they get and stay her, like with her family her parents wouldn't even let us go there really like <laughs> like I've been there like twice but dude it's pretty wild out there so you put yeah. a bunch of uh, skinny distance runner boys out there yep. give We're them a couple of drinks right yeah. 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 In the morning. Yep. anything can happen a gush of wind we just blow into the 36 <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there but <clears throat> yeah so that's I guess our um, I guess we'll have weekly crush games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Short sure. talking yeah. banter yeah. updates. Every week we'll do an update. Yeah, yeah, checking back in with that. But still excited. Still just want to see more teams get announced. Because Me too. How, like, that's the thing. In reality, we can only really talk shit against Tin Men right now. Because I think that's the only team that we confidently can say is also racing. I think Roots oh. has announced that they're doing it. I think that right. Colin just posted a reel. All right, Ollie, with, say something uh, bad some about Roots. Guys. <laughs> Wait, I got, I got to think of the runners at Roots. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough because I, mean, I don't know who who's running. Olin right? is yeah. literally right. You guys could easily talk some shit on Olin. Olin Olin's racing? racing? Well, he's okay, okay. Alicia talks shit about Olin because <laughs> Alicia just goes, because we're asking like, because I think Strava, Olin's been posting on Strava about his runs and stuff with in flag with the NAZ team. And Alicia's like, I was asking, because like, Alicia was looking through it and I was like, oh, how's Olin going? She's like, yeah, he's training pretty good for him. Like around the same time as I run. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. She's like, yeah, and he runs like a minute quicker, like a minute and a half quicker than me. But you know, he's running the same times that I run in training. I was like, okay, so Olin. <laughs> Olin didn't deserve that. You didn't deserve that, man. But <laughs> I'm just telling you, like, that. Alicia definitely. Alicia's just, coming for Olin. <laughs> Alicia just went super clutch on that. It's like. She's probably she's racing the men's team actually. We just announced yeah. it. She's, yeah. she's on our team. She's yep. top five. She's gonna be your low stick. She's our low yeah, stick actually. Yeah. yeah, Parsons did ask last week who our low stick was. We're hiding it. It's Alicia yep. Monson. Yep, that sounds good. Yeah, that's big that's reveal. It was gonna be Helen, but you know she had big, bigger fish to fry she with the New York Marathon. Kenya instead, yeah. she's also using the excuse. Yeah, <laughs> she's using the New York Marathon. Weak excuse, excuse honestly. Weak, but yeah. So we're talking about New York, but we haven't even said how you did. And obviously, we want to say congratulations. You were were you tenth place? Yeah, tenth and second American. Yep. Nice little payday. Congratulations. Thank yeah. You. Yep. Was you, what was your time? Uh, I, I, 2.15? Yeah. 23, I think. Yeah. I'm not honestly super sure. Doesn't uh, really matter. Yeah, pretty relevant. When you're in a race like that, yeah. obviously New York is known for just racing and not uh, the quickest course, mm-hmm. actually a quite slow course relatively. And then it was an unseasonably warm day is yep. what we're hearing. Mm-hmm. It was like 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 20, low 20s Celsius, I think. When you see that, because like obviously the week leading up, I'm sure you were checking the weather and stuff. Yep. When you see those weather conditions, are you like freaking out or are you like changing your plans? Or are you like, does that actually make you more confident? Like, because cause you're obviously a very smart racer. Mm-hmm. Are you like, a bunch of people are going to fucking blow up and I'm going to come through? Yeah, definitely more of that. Like I ran Chicago last year and it was basically the exact same weather conditions and I was ninth there. Um, mm-hmm. So looking at the weather, I was like, you know, obviously I'd, like it'd be great to run fast. And I think I was in shape to run a PR on that course if it was like, a normal day in New York like I think I could have ran faster than I did in Boston like mid 210 somewhere like that um, but so there's like initially that little bit of disappointment knowing that that's obviously going to be out the window out but the it's window also like yeah. really exciting to look at that and be like okay well I've competed in virtually the exact same conditions before and it was like a huge plus for me like I was seated 30th in Chicago and finished 9th and then was seated 22nd for New York and finished 10th um, so it just kind of levels the playing field a good bit like it obviously favors the people who can race with their heads more than their hearts and that I think is definitely like a strength at times for me and then other times it can be a weakness right like if you're not willing to just like have the pure panache to make like a, a bit super of, intense bit of Sam, panache. Parsons, um, Sam Parsons if you will right yes the, the Parsons at Fifth Ave <laughs> way to run um, so yeah it's, it's good like Parsons and I always level each other out um, but yeah so for me like I was looking the at the weather yin, and, and yang right exactly Perfect. um 
So did yeah, that, did that actually nice happen? Kind of catching some people towards the end? Yeah, uh, I talked to Fobbs after and like we had very similar race experiences. Like basically from the half marathon on, we were just running completely by ourselves. Um, and it's really like in Chicago, there was a lot of... Like in Chicago, I didn't go out with the main American pack and then I picked all of them off in the last basically 10k um but this time i went out with the american pack and then went off the front of it so it's like me and fobble basically just like took off around half and he just took off more than i did um and, and basically held that gap the whole way to the finish but when people are dropping out you don't get like the satisfaction of no, passing people not at all. and so like i i had no idea if i was in like 25th or 5th um until they have a big jumbotron when you turn into central park and they had like the leaderboard ticker on top and i saw that lenny was in 10th at the last split and that was after i'd passed lenny so i was like okay oh, wow. then i'm in 10th that's gonna be a good feeling yeah it was a great feeling <laughs> yeah but yeah like, i think i from <laughs> from mile 16 to the finish i think lenny was the only person that in the men's field that i passed so it's like that's I moved crazy. Up like eight spots between 16 and 26 but i only actively passed one person besides i guess the uh brazilian guy who was like still passed out yeah, on the ground at, at 35k when i passed him so it was like yeah you just have like it's just you're in your own little island out there so you really have no idea like where you're at and how well your race is really going until you cross the finish line like i thought i was third american because i didn't know game when it dropped out until after the race so it was just like such a chaotic bloodbath of a day that it was kind of just like just gonna keep running i guess <laughs> just keep chugging along. <laughs> yep exactly that is weird because that's such a polar opposite to like our racing experiences right. on the track just mm -hmm. like just because you're obviously in a marathon you're in such a zone of discomfort but then also just being in a zone of you're yeah, not really knowing what's going on but just knowing that you just got to keep running like i can't even imagine how that feels that's gonna be really tough but um this is a kind of random aside would you drop out of a marathon or would you push your body to the limit how, what's like as an actual marathoner because yeah obviously like the two schools would be like if you're blowing up it's like okay just cut like drop losses. out cut mm -hmm. your losses like and then you can go again or does the pride take over i'd say it depends on the race so i get the trials obviously that was my marathon debut and yeah i fell like twice and there's that picture of me like bleeding from the head yeah. um in a race like that, like I had nothing on my calendar after, like the Olympic trials is obviously like a race that people work a lifetime to be at. And, like you're taking a qualifying spot in theory from someone to be there. So like that one for me, it was one that I finished when I probably shouldn't have. Like I ran 225 and was running like seven minute pace for basically the last 10K. So mm. there was no merit to me finishing. Like I was like 197th that day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, kind of just the, the pride and like the importance of that race and the fact that there was nothing after that made me want to finish it um but i also you know like i was talking to abdi after the race and he dropped out at like maybe 25 30k and he was saying that like because he cut his losses when he did like he hopes to bounce back and be able to run another marathon here in like the next couple of months so yeah that's where you know if there is something that you have is maybe a bit of a backup plan in your mind and it's like an actual feasible opportunity then maybe it's better to cut your losses but also like most major marathons will cut your appearance fee in half if you don't finish the race so if you start but don't mm, finish so it's like also depending you know like some of the guys like shadrach who debuted um finished but he yeah. ran like 230 yeah um but i'm sure you know roadrunners pays pretty well like i would imagine his appearance fee was pretty good and if you cut that in half like that can be yeah that like up until he just signed with puma right but before that he didn't have a contract so for him like a lot of times you're making your livelihood off of the appearance fees and the prize money in the marathons if you don't have a shoe deal. So there's also, you, know, you got to weigh the pros and cons. Like, okay, well, if I drop out, then I'm losing the paycheck a bit. But then do I recoup that in another race if I can bounce back? So yeah, it's a, a tricky one. But I personally have yet to have like a moment in a marathon where I'm like, I'm screwed. I'm just dropping out. Yeah. I hope you never have that moment. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I, I really hope you don't. Because yeah, it just, no, it just I, sounds yeah. like, it sounds crushing for yeah. anyone to go yeah. through that because like, like it's like it's 18 months right like a yeah. plan and mm -hmm. and then you're in that moment and you're just like this is like what i've been training for for 18 months whereas yeah. like for our like Eight, perspective 18 weeks, 18 weeks. yeah sorry 18, 18 months, months. <laughs> it's like i mean maybe but <laughs> depends, depends on who <laughs> 18 it's, a really, it's a really important race i, po yeah. I apologize but, but 18, yeah. it's a really important race whereas for us like <laughs> it's just different because we're like yeah. oh we can race next week mm -hmm. whereas like in the mouth you just can't do that yeah i don't think i would ever drop out of a race still i don't know 
I it's don't all, know. Yeah, it's also what about like, an injury? Like, if you have yeah. an injury, you'd have so, to drop mm-hmm. down. I mean, it's your whole body <laughs> just yeah, like right. mile yeah. ten. You're like, oh, yeah. Really I also like logistically, I just think it would be hard to drop out of a marathon. Like, if you drop out of a track race, <laughs> it's like, oh home? shit! At most, I have to walk two hundred meters back to where my stuff is, right? But like, if you drop out at like mile fourteen in New York City, you're just like kind of standing on the side of the road and telling <laughs> the medical people like, oh, we got like a shuttle for you. But Sounds like, terrible. yeah, it's just kind of like a. Yeah, it's, I don't know. <laughs> Ritz definitely has a story like that. Does of he? Somewhere where he's had to step off with a torn planner or something. And then he's just, just like, stuck. No oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's a tough one. I, I would say I probably feel like I'd be the same way as you, mm-hmm. where it's like in the right race. Like, I think if you're ever, say, for example, like we're in like your national kit, like if you're in a race that's like that big, you probably yep. want to finish it. Right. But if you're at a race, yeah, for example, if you had tried to do, um, what was the last one, Chicago? Mm-hmm. And, like, it wasn't going well for some reason. It, it's just, like, and then you could race New York or right. something mm-hmm. and, and make it up. I would probably drop out, even though that kind of make, makes me sound like a pussy, but I don't no, know. I mean, it's, it's obviously, it's not super uncommon. Like, if yeah. you look at the rate of attrition this past weekend, like, a good amount of people dropped out, so you would you would not be alone in that. What's the next month? Is it Boston, the next one? The majors, yeah. Uh, I think Tokyo and London Tokyo. will be before Boston. Okay, yeah. Those are more like early spring. Is there, is there like international ones? Like, what's the ones that you want to do? You want to do all of them, all the majors? Or? I'd love to at some point. Yeah. yeah. So I've done that. New York was the last domestic one. So yeah. I've done all the ones in the states now. Um, so yeah, that leaves Berlin, London, and Tokyo. So we'll see. Maybe there's Berlin will be the one around quick, right? That's yeah, the quick one, right? Yeah. So that's like maybe. Oh. <laughs> The FedEx guy with horrific timing. <laughs> horrific timing. Um, I think we can roll through that. Can we roll through that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can Gus, cut it out. Gus, let him know. just chill. <laughs> I was thinking, another aside, we just go off topic a bunch of times. Speaking of the Olympic trials, how do you feel about going to Disneyland? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Disney Orlando. Orlando. I assume Orlando. you're going. Orlando. Uh, we're going to Orlando, baby. Um, no, I, I think it'll be... I think it's good. Like, a lot of people have said that it won't... It's so different from the marathon <laughs> course, right? Like the the Paris course is like fourteen hundred feet of elevation gain, and Orlando maybe has like four <laughs> feet of elevation gain. So weird. I think it's going to be. There's always that like fear that you're not going to send the right people. Um, What's New York? Just to for reference, New York's like nine hundred, so it's okay. pretty substantially. Like Paris is going to be a very hard course. It's wow, similar. that is so hilly. Yeah, it's That's like hilly. Atlanta was for the twenty twenty trials, um, yeah. and that was yeah. a really tough course. So. Mm. Yeah, there's there's obviously that fear um, that that the team that we send may not be prepped, but I also think it's really like naive to say that just because you run well on a flat course doesn't mean that you're going to be stupid and like not train for a course that you know is completely different. And there's plenty of time in between the two to yeah. like turn things around and train. You know, you're going to do an entirely separate build. So I don't, I'm excited for it. Like I think. I typically do a little bit better on courses that are like more longer gradual climbs or flatter rather than like short steep climbs. I'm not like a super punchy hill climber kind of guy. I definitely enjoy like the longer, like New York is nice because it's long grind bridges Mm -hmm. rather than like short steep stuff. So I think that will play to my strengths. And then the weather wise, it'll either be like nice or it'll be hot and humid. And I've now ran Chicago and New York in hot and humid and been totally fine. So I think, yeah, it should be. So what, time, what time of year is it? February 3rd. It's so literally, like it's only winter. just over a year away. Yeah. It's so like based on our experiences. Out. Yeah. Months out. Yeah. That's insane. Mm-hmm. Based on our experiences uh, in Florida during that time of year, it can be pretty shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> From what we've experienced on training camp, yeah. Yeah. pretty shit. Yeah. We, haven't, we haven't ragged on Florida in about uh, probably 30 episodes, so yeah. we'll bring it's it back. Bring it back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll the okay. yeah. Will you go to Disneyland afterwards? Uh, it probably depends on how well I race. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if Reed, Reed makes the teams on yeah. the walk. <laughs> yeah. If I'm pissed off, I'm getting on the next flight home. If yeah. I make the team, you'll see me on Space Mountain. Like, Just having hour, to be. Yeah. 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 Like, as soon as I'm out of Paris. drug testing, yeah. I'm going to Magic Have the American Kingdom. flag with you. Just, yeah. <laughs> Just spinning around Space Mountain. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it'll make some awesome like photo and content oh, opportunities that would be great content yeah, yeah that'd that'd just to go fun. into the park after that'd be great like content a, to make yeah like i mean there's um like when shalane did her project last year where she ran all the, the majors and then like new york was the last one and courtney white did like a very cool photo shoot with her on the subway of new york with all her medals on it 
And that's like, I feel like you can do something like that, but like yeah. on a roller coaster in Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Just just elevate that. Yes, exactly. Roller coaster yeah. in Disney World. It's, it's as if Disney needs more, I was about to say, more no. exposure <laughs> yeah. and free marketing. Yeah. Yeah. They, they seem to be struggling. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to they're going to slap us with a copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast. Oh, fucked, Sorry, man. fellas. They're, they're going to take all that money from us now. All that yeah. money that we The made. prize money should come from Disney. It should just be like, yeah. yeah. Honestly. Be a drop in the bucket for them. Really. Honestly. Yeah. Wait, is the cause actually linked to is it actually around the park they or is it just somewhere the course, random but there is like the disney marathon which oh. is in orlando um, okay. so i can't imagine it's going to be the same course but at the same time like it'd be cool, be cool. yeah you would think they cool probably idea. have some nice like promenade yeah, roads. roads with yep. some yep. like pretty good yeah. surface yeah i guess the reality is like you just can't i don't know how the disney marathon works but you can't shut down Disney. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. think about how much it costs to shut down Disney mm-hmm. for yeah. a day. It'd yeah. be hilarious though if, like, you just have Mickey Mouse holding the tape. Like, right. just yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope that still happens. Yeah. You can, you can Reed's, com- Reed's coming through with the tape and Mickey Mouse is just holding yeah. it. Yeah, right. If, if you can't afford to shut down Disney for the day, at least you can do is rent Mickey Mouse. Yeah, for the day. exactly. Yeah. That's like I'm the sure very you can least do that. you can do when you're all in the Orlando. characters out yeah. there. Yeah. When, you, when you make the US team, they just put it <laughs> the Disneyland yeah. hat on it. The Mickey ears on it. They don't give you a medal. They just give you that. Every mile marker is a different disney character yeah <laughs> waving is there enough disney characters for that yes. oh it's, it's endless yeah. <laughs> so we swear. can make some more if I can, okay <laughs> name name five disney characters i can't i can't Mickey name like mouse, three mini mouse donald duck daffy, daffy duck, duck goofy, and one more goofy. <laughs> oh, that's five that's pretty good <laughs> i can only that's, 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 that's like, like og disney. yeah there's like og like there's like disney think about how much disney is like all that star wars are we counting all that star wars okay i'm in the og stuff i can't remember but you're right you could you could definitely just add in star wars and like all the other we can, we can make it work yeah. princess stuff yeah they have a uh, i'm trying to think if they have any running based movies i don't think they do yeah mcfarland yeah because McFarlane, McFarlane disney yeah yeah mm. okay so Were you got danny diaz NCAA's the year that they did like the premiere of that we didn't we, we went there Cross. for that yeah i think it was I think 20 it was, it was my senior year i think so it's 2016 maybe yeah it was the year freshman we didn't year. qualify uh, <laughs> freshman year that's one up on it yeah, yeah. wait um was kevin yeah, costner there yeah no i don't think he was there oh damn but they did like a because they do like the the pre race dinner for everybody, mm-hmm. right? And they did like a it was after the dinner they did a showing of McFarland USA, and I think like twenty people stayed. <laughs> I did know you watch it? No, oh. like, no I'm, I'm racing an NCAA championship. Yeah, I'm going home. I need to watch a mediocre Kevin Costner. <laughs> I know they did the same thing at Foot Locker, and I think that was mm-hmm. probably a more appropriate audience. Yeah, yeah I was gonna yeah. say. I think college I think the high a bit... school crowd would play a little bit better than <laughs> the college. Bit older. Bit older. College than the college. Is like fuck yeah. that. I'm going to bed. Yeah. But um, so. We've had a couple of asides with Dalek yeah, back yeah. into the New York the Marathon. guy really threw us for a loop there. Yeah, that was tough, but we made it through that. But we did. So everyone talks about New York is, well, actually, we did have some pushback last week when we said that New York was like the biggest uh, like U.S. marathon, like the biggest weekend in distance running in America. What do you, it, like, because you've experienced them all now, is mm-hmm. New York the premier or how is it compared to Boston? Uh, it's kind of apples to oranges, I think. Oh, like, you can't really do an honest comparison of them like boston's got like just the hair i was talking about this before we started recording but the heritage in boston's insane and like boston gets the day off it's patriots day so everybody's off they can all the baseball game as well right um so it's kind of like the entire city is sort of like based around the marathon for that weekend whereas new york like it's just such a big city that sure it's like maybe more overall crowd support than boston but it's also like you get people like you know, at like mile 14, there's a police officer just like in between me and Fobble, just like letting somebody cross the road. He's probably like, I'm just trying to go get some groceries, man. Yeah, you know? New York, so New York just, life is still very yeah, much exactly. so happy. And then like there was that viral TikTok of like in the Hasidic Jew neighborhood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with all the guys the like trying to cross through the marathon. Yeah, pretty they, impressive they by that. It was, yeah. yeah. Um, they don't they, give a fuck they had a lot that. more space to cross when, when the my group was going through, but it was still funny to see him like, just just weaving through, the yeah, no, like this, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just a totally different experience. Like Boston, everybody knows that the marathon's going on. Everybody's out for it, and everybody who's like there cheering or out on the roads at that point is like there to watch the marathon. Mm-hmm. Whereas New York, it's like someone probably just like went to get a bagel, and right? Like, oh, exactly. The, the marathon. Oh, shit, look at <laughs> these guys going, yeah, exactly. Um, but this is yeah, the question: can go unnoticed. between between Boston and New York, which one would you want to win? As a, as a marathon. Oh, oh man. Would you be like, oh, I don't mind. Gosh, that is one? hard. Yeah, or would I you mean, be I like, still if, you had to, if you only can only win one, is yep. it New York or is it Boston? I guess yeah. it depends on the competition. Mm-hmm. The, obviously what you're No, running. we want a concrete answer. Yeah. <laughs> we want a concrete. I would say, 
If you, yeah. win, if you win Boston, you're like an American distance running legend forever. Yeah. So Boston it is. Then. So Boston, yeah. but like I feel like the anticipation that the, was like the visibility maybe of New York. Like there's just so many, like you guys talked about. There's so many. Everybody's in New York. Like every brand, yeah, every sponsor, like the every company. A, a so maybe New like York. New York could be more lucrative to win. Yeah. But I really, I don't know. I haven't won either. So maybe this when is... I win both, I'll let you know. Yeah. yeah. When you win, you <laughs> we'll back on the pod. We'll have you back on the pod when that happens. Yeah. But I think the way you explain it would be nice. It's like if you're like just you want to have that legacy, Boston. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you want to get like good support afterwards, right. New York. Yeah. Maybe that's why we sit New York because we're not American. Yeah. But if you're 100%, American, I think you're right. If you're American, and you win Boston. I can Im- you go down history. Yeah, but if sure. you're like a foreigner like us and you win New York, you probably get right. a really good deal. Yeah. But it's yeah. same with the Americans too. Yeah, but I mean, I, either way, you win either, you're doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doing pretty well for yourself yeah, the other day. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, looking at like kind of the behind the scenes, like the underbelly of like what it's like to be an elite runner at uh, New York. We know because we've had some experience with New York Road Runners because mm-hmm. we've done Fifth Ave. Like yep. they look after you pretty well, huh? Yeah, what's really what's, well. The, what's like the athlete experience if you're like in your category? Yeah, uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, every every major race does an awesome job by their elites. Like I've never shown up to Chicago, Boston, or New York and been like, I don't really know what's going on, you yeah. know, or like not felt <laughs> taken care of. Um, but yeah, Roadrunners does an incredible job with everything. Sam and the whole team is super easy to work with. You know, you show up and basically from the time your plane touches down and the time it takes us off, like you don't have to think about anything. Um, yeah. The, the volunteers and the staff are all amazing. So yeah, it's it's really cool. Like they take you to Ocean Breeze, which you guys have banners hanging up there. It was pretty fun. I was Kilgore, David Kilgore, your your yeah. on buddy. Um, yeah. He was in the sub elite field, so I was talking to him before the race, and I was like, "Look, you guys got some some on names up in the rafters here." Um, so it's obviously a beautiful facility. They bust you over there, so you don't have to deal with taking the Staten Island ferry, which like the people who are in the mass races do. Um, so it just it makes it a lot less stressful and hectic of a morning to be in the elite corral and to be taken care of by mm. road runners whereas if you're in the general start like I, you know you watch like, the like youtube videos show, yeah. of somebody like doing a, a vlog on the new york city marathon it's like well yeah. that that is a completely different experience they're up like had. five hours yeah, yeah. before the race just, like, just to commute yeah there. it seems like uh, i don't even on a great weather day new york just seems like a crazy place to go try and run a pr because of like just the stress of the morning and then the course being so difficult but yeah, I mean, it's... It is just a different, is experience. It's a different experience for them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But our next guest will just be someone that ran it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ran I think it. my exactly. mom's running. We could, she's upstairs. Yeah, we could ask her. Pod, yeah. <laughs> we could ask her. Um, but sorry, what were you saying? No, that was pretty much it. Yeah, it, they, I mean, they just do a they great job, as you guys well. have experienced. So, yeah, I mean... It's, There's a sweet post-race dinner, isn't there? Or something like There is. Um, you go to that? I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard it's amazing. It's at Fogo de Chao. So if you're big into like a nice steakhouse experience, mm. it's, it's good stuff. Of course, New York has it at a steakhouse. Right. Um, just makes sense. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I did a... You guys actually talked about the TCS partnership I did, which is how you knew that the split screen broadcasting was happening yeah um so yeah tcs is obviously the presenting partner of new york um and they had a big event after that was at the same time as the athlete dinner so i went to that instead of the athlete dinner sorry checks out checks out yep. that's yep. too bad um this is like just a very another random new york like or just general marathon question how do you make sure that you get your bottle when you're racing that's a good question because <laughs> I, I didn't get my bottle at 15k oh um, really? seriously yeah, so this is a great opportunity Abdi and Jared, thank you both. Um, yeah, my bottle just wasn't on the table at 15K. I don't really know what happened still. Somebody said that, like, the Brazilian guy who's leading, like, at the 15K station, like, grabbed a bottle that maybe wasn't his and then just, okay. like, didn't know what to do with it. And then, yeah. so that might have been mine. I don't know what happened to it. But by the time I got there, it just wasn't on the table. Um, he, so was, I, he was extra thirsty by the yeah, already. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, he needed, uh, maybe he needed the, he needed the a couple. scratch that I had. Um, <laughs> So I was really fortunate to be in a group still at that point and really fortunate that Avdi and Jared are both like very selfless, great people to compete with and against. Um, so they saw that I didn't get my bottle and they both had Morton. So That's it wasn't huge. like I used Scratch Super Fuel. So I, it wasn't what I'd trained with, which is always nerve wracking when you yeah. like don't get your own fuel. Um, so I was like the next 5K until I got back to my next bottle. I was kind of worried that like I just hadn't taken enough because I didn't want to like take all of their fuel obviously or just was gonna have like gi issues because it was something totally foreign to me but it worked out fine Mm -hmm. um but yeah they so it's they have tables set up obviously they're like numbered so it's one through i think nine for 
the size of the pro field they had in New York, and there's usually like two to four bottles on each table, and it's based on your bib number. So I was bib 22, so I was on the table with bib 2, 12, 22, and 32. Interesting. And then they have it placed. So if it's two first, 12 next, 22, and then 32. So you have like a table and spot on every table (laughs) that's like assigned and consistent throughout the race. So you just like obviously make sure you know so you'd be like the third bottle on Correct. table yeah, two. Yeah, I was table. Yep, exactly. I was bottle two on table five, I think. Yeah, okay, okay, um, okay. And then obviously everyone has like different bottles, and so mine have like tape and a Tin Man sticker on it, so yeah. that I can like recognize it and see it and grab it. And if somebody else picks it up, they're like, "Wait a minute, yeah, this isn't mine." Yeah. <laughs> and then usually, if you grab a bottle that's not yours by accident, you'll like. The, ideally, you get it at like an earlier table. And then you can, there's usually volunteers and staff like along the tables. And so you can like basically say, this isn't mine and drop it. And then they'll pick it up and Mm -hmm. they put it. Usually there's like a overflow table at the end. That's just empty for scenarios like that. And they'll pick it up and put it on the end. So when my bottle wasn't there at 15 K, I was like, okay, maybe it's going to be on the last table, but then it wasn't there either. So yeah. Damn. What a system you have. Yeah. No, it's like a well-oiled machine. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That is definitely very like lucid to be able to. Yeah. I mean, I've always said like marathon training and racing feels like a completely different sport from like track racing. Cause there's so much like things that you just don't have to think about when you're running on the track. But then all of a sudden when like all these factors come into play, you have to be yeah prepared for it. One of the things that risks, talked about he said i heard him say this a few times and it's hard for me to imagine this just based on the races that i do but he kept emphasizing how in the marathon like you should feel good and obviously feeling good is relative like Mm -hmm. sometimes you you know you're running the same pace and you feel amazing and sometimes you're running the same pace and you feel terrible but he's was like yeah you should feel really like one of the difficulties is that you should feel relatively within your comfort zone for a large like, portion of it yeah mm-hmm. so yep. what what point do, is that like how you feel is yeah that how you approach um it? i feel again I, like just with my experience i feel like i've had a couple of outliers because it's like boston and Ch- or uh, new york and chicago have been such crappy weather days that like in both of those races i didn't really feel good because yeah. it's just so hot and humid and you're like dumping cups of water on yourself and like just trying to mitigate damage so early and you're not running like the pace that you trained at you're like a quarter of a gear off that so it just feels kind of unnatural like i'd planned for running 455 to five minute pace and that's what all my rhythm work was at up here and then all of a sudden on race day you're like okay well 510 to 505 this is going to be a great day so yeah. you just feel a little bit like out of your rhythm um but in boston i felt great through like yeah probably like 16 to 18 um and that's was like the only one that i've ran it's been like nice weather yeah, for normal. racing so yeah. i would say in a typical marathon, maybe, yeah, it's, it's usually through at least halfway. You want to feel really in control. Um, do you wait until you get to go to, like, Berlin? I know. Like yeah, that's, <laughs> I, yeah, that's, like, I'm a bunch of... I'm just thinking through every single one of your yeah, marathon experience. It's absolute been, shit. Like, yeah, shit show, yeah. yeah, Boston was nice, obviously, but Boston's not, like, the fastest course. It's a hard um, course. So, yeah, I'm definitely excited to have the stars align maybe at some point and just be like, oh... It's 50 degrees and not windy, and, and I can <laughs> just go run fast. Yeah, yeah. Well. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I'm Yeah, I'm... I feel like having those three in your back pocket, though, like, will seat you up well for hopefully. a fast one. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm I mean, sure I this is so easy. <laughs> yeah, it'll be one or the other, right? Because, like, yeah, Chicago, I ran 214.40, and then New York, I ran, yeah, like, 215 mid. Uh-huh. So it's just, like, not... You know, you're coming through halfway in, like, 67 minutes, whereas if I want to run, like... 208 in berlin next year you're coming through in like three minutes faster than that so it might that just be a very like a different bit experience. Like, Ooh, okay that feels different um, <laughs> i'm sure it's still gonna hurt right but it'll just hopefully be in a much better way i'll be in pain instead of like this sucks and i'm running slow it'll be like, this <laughs> yeah. sucks but at least i'm running fast um but yeah it's i'm hoping i'll get lucky with one year <laughs> someday you gotta think if you keep racing them, eventually it's gonna yep. come. eventually yeah. the stars right. will align yep. the stars yep. will align mm-hmm. yeah. what is a weird concept knowing that it should feel good for a long time, but it, it makes a little bit of sense if you think if you do a lot of training at threshold, mm-hmm. you should only, your threshold should be how long you can run, how fast you can run for an hour. Right. The marathon's double that. So it has to be, you know, some amount slower mm-hmm. than threshold pace yep. already. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, usually you say like you shouldn't ever like ex- for me, I should never like exceed threshold effort in a marathon for more than like mm. a minute or two or unless it's in like the last couple miles. Cause like, 
as soon as you go over yeah well it's yeah and that's it right it's like when you like bonk a lot of times it's because you've gone too hard too soon and there's this that like small window where it's like you're right on the knife's edge where if you run too fast you blow up and if you run too slow you just run too slow and you have more in the tank do you have a good idea of that exact feeling like do you know when Uh, you're kind of right there i think so yeah i mean i feel like i've learned in each subsequent marathon like that I have a little bit more to give. Like in Chicago, that was effectively my debut. And so like I finished and I was like, wow, that was the hardest thing I've ever done. But then I ran Boston and was like, wow, that was the hardest thing I've ever done. And I ran New York and I'm like, wow, that was the hardest thing I've ever done. It's just like each time I feel like I'm able to dig a little bit deeper and pull a little bit more out of myself. And I think that just kind of comes with the terror. You know, like if you think about when you ran your first 5K instead of a 1500, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, that felt like a lot. And then each subsequent race thereafter it's like oh okay that feels a little bit more like normal and predictable now so i think that's kind of the same mo in the marathons it's like the more experience you have in it the more you know how you should feel at certain points during the race that's definitely one of the things that i noticed like looking at my own experiences of like racing the 5k if you compare like someone like myself to a more beginner runner is i think you can make yourself hurt so yeah, so much definitely. more like you can get so much more out of yourself and that just comes with like definitely just the experience mm-hmm. of doing it yeah and it's like you definitely yeah one of the i've definitely said this on the podcast before but like the biggest misconceptions is like the better you get the easier it feels mm-hmm. it feels no. harder and harder yeah. like it gets harder and harder <laughs> yeah like the better you get yeah. like you or just if, get better at yeah, dealing with exactly. it exactly and i think that's like why running is such a unique sport because like if i go to the gym and i put up a bunch of you know it's a classic analogy like i can go to the gym but i don't feel like i'm lebron james because lebron james feels totally different when he's on a basketball court than i do Mm -hmm. but like in talking to other like i coach and i've obviously been in a bunch of marathons i see what people experience when they run a marathon whether it's me running 210 or somebody running 310 or 410 or 510 it's like yeah the, the pain and suffering that those people go through is like the exact same yeah. pain and suffering it might be to a slightly different degree you know one way or another but yeah it's like they know exactly what i feel and i know exactly what they feel which i think is a really cool thing so yeah mm-hmm. it's like maybe i can tolerate a bit more of it but relatively speaking like it still sucks for everybody right you know <laughs> it sucks for everyone yeah <laughs> big big old shared experience yep. sucking definitely love it <laughs> you can build a community around that um, sure can. Yeah. <laughs> speaking about the pain and suffering one of the q a's that we had last week that we didn't get to was just going out to us have we thought about moving up to the marathon so obviously reed you've ticked that box yes. <laughs> congratulations yep. Thank you. well done <laughs> ollie and george have you guys thought about it i mean obviously we talk about it sometimes. this is this is the thing i didn't really like have much interaction with the marathon until coming to the states and then even become professionally like uh seeing reed and then seeing like other friends emma bates like all these people do the marathon and then watching them on tv you do kind of like feel like this is like oh this would be an amazing thing to experience like something special about something it. special about it yeah definitely and i definitely have that experience i am a 1500 meter runner though <laughs> so i definitely start to think about wow like running 210 running that quickly for a marathon scares the absolute fuck out of me so like i don't know if like because i could be somebody that never progresses well in distance or i could be someone that hopefully can get there i would love to i will do a marathon in my at some point Will I be good at it? I don't know, but I'd love to do one. Like, for example, um, I have this like idealistic goal that I'd finish my career in 2032 Brisbane Olympics marathon. That's, that's my, what, like, that's what we've talked about. Yeah, that would be like awesome. a good way to like send off my professional career if I'm yeah. like that, that age. But, and I've talked to Ritz about it as well. Like Ritz all, like he wants us all to be marathon yeah, sure. Like he's yeah. so like, <laughs> every, every marathon marathon he's just so, he's like, like oh, marathon, you guys yeah. would be great. Like Alicia and Joe. And like, he just gets really excited about it, which is lovely. Cause that's like Ritz loves the marathon. Yeah, right. Um, but I would love to do it. Will I be good at it? I have no idea. Will I do it? Definitely. I just think like the all I have, the respect I have, I think most runners in the community, I can't, I can speak for myself, but not for everyone. Most runners in the community have a lot of respect for the marathon. I think it's because, particularly watching it. Like I'll never like, you can get bored with watching sport events like baseball. Like for me, sometimes NFL gets boring, but with watching uh, marathon running, even though I'm like zoning in and out, like I'm always like super engaged in what's going on. I find it really interesting. I find it, um, I don't know, just, it's just brutal. Yeah. <laughs> so I like that part about our sport because our sport is just brutal in general. So I, to answer the question, yes, I think I will do a marathon. Um, just further down the pipeline. Further down the pipeline, hopefully. I'd love to stay in the 1500 for a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. George? Did, is, did you have to like, 
Was it you just woke up one day and you were like, all right, I want to be a marathoner? I've just was never it? been fat. I've never broken two minutes in the 800, George. So I, I was pretty much destined for the marathon if I wanted to keep doing this. I didn't choose the marathon. The marathon yeah. chose me. <laughs> like my first weekend at Drake when I was a freshman, I like sat down with my coach and he was just like, you're going to be really good at the marathon one day. I'm like, okay. Does he call you on now? And he's like, see, I told yeah, you. I told yeah, you. Exactly. Um, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I just like woke up and was like, that'd be fun one day. But I felt like it was kind of always the trajectory that I would hmm. find. You, well, you came to it pretty quick. Right. Relative. I mean, I'm still, pre- I'm 27 right now. So yeah. yeah, for a marathon or like, I'm still not in my peak, but mm-hmm. I ran a handful. So mm-hmm. yeah, I debuted when I was 24. Wow. Which is young. That's impressive. Particularly with like, yeah. I just feel quite far away from. <laughs> yeah, which is fair. Yeah, I, 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 I you're, you're also young. I run and you're also not running anywhere close to a marathon. I so run. That's fair. I mean, Oli, I feel like it could run one like next week. I am still running five days a week on the ground, <laughs> yeah. so I feel like um. But there's so many. I love the history of like, there back when New Zealand had a its heyday. Not that it it's having a good time right now and distance yeah, running. All right. But back in kind of the 60s, 70s, the people like Rod Dixon who medaled in the Olympics of the 1500 and then went and won the New York Marathon. Mm. Like, no, I mean, like just we, legendary yeah. New Zealand Both countries. distance runners New Australia. that then would like, yeah, yeah, fuck it, I'm going to go run a marathon. <laughs> we got great, we got great history. I mean, we got uh, De Costello, Steve Monaghetti. Like, we've got really good history in the marathon for mm-hmm. um, Australia and New Zealand. So it's, it's yeah. a cool thing for us too, particularly. And I think, yeah, George, like you'd have to get to the seven day uh on the ground cycle we probably. start with that yeah and then <laughs> we progress yeah. but no rush but it's just yeah i think the marathon definitely it's appealing but then hearing you know you talk about the pain and like the, the duration and every like all the, the stuff that goes into it it's just definitely a point where you want to be like this is when i want to do it it's like having a kid you gotta fully commit to it <laughs> it's like having a kid it's like having a marathon baby <laughs> so yeah. you're like yep i want to i want a baby yep i want to do the marathon it's yeah. the same same thing right yeah you can't rush that because that's yeah, how i, I feel <laughs> Always back talking about babies again. <laughs> no, yeah, it's just an analogy. It's just an analogy. Sure, sure, Always sure. says, just. yeah, if I, if I don't have a partner by the time I'm 50, I'm probably going to adopt a marathon. Hey, those, <laughs> those odds are looking more and more like, viable now. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think it's, it's just, yeah, it's commendable. No, it's sick. It, it definitely takes time because I feel the, pretty similar to George where I'm like, I want to run. Like, I ju- you just need to let it come to you, I feel like, yeah, because sure. I, I definitely grew up idolizing kind of the, classic distance runner like you have a track career and like by the end you're like a 5k 10k guy mm-hmm. and like me hopefully you are strong enough to double like in the way that like grant can already do it right now but like you do that and then you do that for like a few years and then you move up to the marathon that's kind of how i've always like looked at it but it's like i don't feel like close to that at all right now like it's that feels so far away still so if you think about it, though in 2032 10 years from now imagine how yeah. good the shoes are going to be dude yeah, we're not even going to have to run <laughs> this, the, the yeah. shoes are going to run themselves yeah. there's, there's yeah. hope for us <laughs> be hoverboard that's, <laughs> like, that's what everyone's been saying dude it's just going to be f1 out here yeah. just, <laughs> just tight shoe technology. changes when yeah. it stops. Yeah. all the rules and regulations compound yeah. is going to be right for you are yeah. you on the c2s yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good pick oh. Tim has a salary cap yeah. he's like yeah yeah you can't yeah. spend this much money on the shoes for reed it's like oh we'll yeah. break, it'll break the salary limits cap. limits on testing oh yeah. you can only run uh 50 days in the year yeah. <laughs> if you guys are getting too good um you change yeah. out the soles for like a downhill session yeah, yeah. yeah. dude literally, literally wow. that's going to be what's happening yep. can't wait yeah, actually it's it's actually fuck that shit bro <laughs> <laughs> let's get rid of super shoes imagine if they just got rid of super Back shoes right now yeah. imagine if they just did oh, that brutal everyone like would everyone, <laughs> everyone, everyone would just get injured like yeah. within like a month yeah or everyone would go back to being healthy all the time yeah right? one of those two. Like everyone has like high hamstring stuff and like true you know what's Could the, be the way. that would be one. so interesting experiment to have that for like just like two years no super shoes mm-hmm. to see how everyone responds to it yeah. It'd be nuts. It would, yeah. be, it would be wild. Yeah. It's Not like, just on the marathon, but on the track as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like we've all gotten very reliant on oh, it. Oh, 100%. Quickly, for sure. 100%. I remember when they came out and I was like, I'm not doing anything in training in <laughs> And now I'm just like, ah, I'm pretty tired today. I'll throw on the super shoes. I need, <laughs> I need the extra boost this morning. <laughs> Literally, I think it, ha- it happened to me. I think it kind of happened to George as well, where like we started out getting back into workouts. Mm-hmm. Like week one, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna like delay putting on the super shoes for yeah. as long as possible because yeah, yeah. I don't want to like yeah, I, once once yeah once you do yeah. it you can't go back and then the first workout Joe Clark is wearing the super shoes yeah. I'm like well if Joe's wearing them obviously yeah, I, gotta wear them. Oh, obviously, yeah. I gotta that wear them. happens all the time on our team too like obviously, if I show up to a workout and I'm in super shoes everyone's just like 
immediately puts down the shoes they were wearing, goes to their trunk and gets the super shoes. They're like, if Reed's wearing them, I'm wearing them. I've got to wear those. I'm not even going to be able to work out with them. Yeah. It's not even the same workout. I, I love to hear it's the exact same from both teams. It's yeah. just like, yeah. you're just looking around. What, what are you wearing for the workout? Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. going back to the car. Yeah. I, I take pride in, in holding out the longest. I held out like one workout longer. <laughs> it was not very, like, I thought we wouldn't be in super shoes until like December, yeah. like January. It was yeah. like week one. Like, yeah. well, it was cl- click ahead them on the first like minute on minute on well, yeah. Joe was saying he was super out of shape so he probably showed up and was like I need the boost and yeah. then you I guys were probably that. also not in shape so you were like well that's the funny he thing he is the boost I'm taking the boost the funny thing is like oh Joe like oh I'm out of shape still crushes everything yeah. it's like yeah. fuck you're yeah, out of shape bro yeah I ran uh, 10 mile championships for the US was in Minneapolis which is where Joe and I grew up yeah. um, so I ran with him the day before the race and he was like I was doing strides, like pre race strides. And he was like, oh, I might hop in with you. I haven't done strides yet. And Ritz has been telling me I need to start doing strides. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, I'm just doing like six by 20 on 40 off. He was like, okay, I can do that. First stride, he just immediately puts like a meter into me. <laughs> bro, come on. He's like, bro, I got to race yeah, yeah. He's like, confidence. I'm pretty out of shape. As yeah. He's running like yeah. 4 10 You're just looking at him like, what are you doing, bro? Yeah. I had I had a moment of that on the long run uh, yesterday. We long run yesterday. Um, yeah, my Jonas got pissed off because I yeah. was like, I was running with Jonas and I'm like, yeah, I'm just taking it easy today. And yeah. Jonas is like, what the fuck, man? Like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, Jonas, I'm just going to stick with you. I'm going to take it easy today. And then Jonas ended up crushing us. So yeah. that was pretty cool. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's the little the it's little, little things, things. Yeah. little things, the little yep. things in running. They yeah. really get you. And going. It's always, this is always a weird time of year. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, <laughs> I was in the shape of my life, and then we got guys coming back from like, you know, their time off the track season, like you guys yeah, were. Full break. I'm just like slaughtering these dudes. But then it's like that's, no, that's I'm what I heard my ass every for a couple <laughs> weeks, and I'll show up, and then they'll slaughter me right back. So it's just a weird. Everything time. I heard from the the ten men, the inside ten men training was that. The, all the boys were just getting cycled through like being yeah. their training partners yeah. <laughs> I, had some, I had some domestiques for a while yeah. it's like two different stuff as yes. they come back it's like alright this read session let's let's break it up and yep. help them out in these nah, they were very amazing about it like I, yeah it's, that's awesome it's it's a good, so good. I, and they all are like I think it's as you guys have seen like with Helen now like it's really cool when you have a teammate building up for a marathon like you get so invested in like their training and their result that you mm-hmm. like kind of like want to help in any way you can so yeah I'm, I'm super grateful for those guys but yeah it was definitely <laughs> it's just funny to yeah, hear that. yeah. Just, i it's, felt bad sometimes where i was like oh no like, this is your first workout back in boulder and you're just getting thrown and like, I'm, I'm, I'm so freaking like fucking fit right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna destroy you like i'm sorry but i have to yeah, yeah, i need i need a little ego i'm training for the marathon all right i'm gonna yeah, destroy you're just gonna you. have to you're just gonna have to deal with it yeah well um, then there's that like perfect little equilibrium for a while where it was like i was at my peak mileage so i'm just like carrying so much more fatigue and the other guys were like pretty fresh but yeah. then like we're hopping in for like you know five miles of my tempo or whatever so they would just like be able to get through everything with me and then they would just drop and i would have not feel great so i would like mm-hmm. just keep going but mm-hmm. i would not like pick it up like crazy so there's yeah. a nice little overlap there with the bell that curve was, kind of evened out but that was the good times but um you did mention helen a nice little segue yes the next part we want to talk about the new york marathon was our teammate helen obiri obviously we talked about it last week hyped it up a lot massive debut for her she's arguably like the greatest female distance runner of all time mm-hmm. so when you have someone like that running the debut marathon it's going to be a, a big deal uh she's coming off like crushing the 5k 10k and all that on the track for a very long time and yeah as reed mentioned we got to be have front row seats to some of her well that's kind of a lie because she trained at six in the morning so yeah. we didn't we didn't we actually like, we just heard from her we had like yeah. fourth rows yeah. 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 To watch. Yeah. 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 but you definitely do become very invested when you hear like yeah helen crushed 30k today at this mm-hmm. pace and you're like oh you're getting excited you know and um she went out and raced and she ended up coming sixth which is obviously just like that's objectively just a great effort like that's amazing that's a great performance for her she wanted to win like yeah. no question Her, the standard is set so high when you're that good so it was a little bit disappointing uh it was kind of like i would say this is a pretty typical way for someone's first marathon to play out especially when you're just like a racer like yeah. she is she was always just going to be like at the front racing she was looking real good and then i think it's probably was it 30 or 35k she started like dropping off a bit yeah well i, I think, think i think she made it to like it was even further maybe like 37k 37. it was only like three or four miles to go yeah, yeah. your mum noticed because your mum's done a few marathons and was watching her, her cadence just like dropped, dropped. dramatically yeah. and i think ritz when i text ritz afterwards i was like oh like how how is hell and he kind of mentioned that like there's, like there's a few things like just for her learning like the logistics of the marathon like fueling because mm-hmm. she had issues with that like initially and training for the fueling process as well as just like knowing when to push and when not to push maybe because like the girls 5k splits i don't 
have them off my head. But I think like those one five k like that they just dropped the hammer like those mm. like they were racing they were racing they were just racing each other and it was, was just the like top brutal. three separated yeah and I think yeah she was just disappointed the nice thing says is she's gonna miss us she's going back to Kenya to be mm. with her family and stuff um, and then she'll be coming back to Boulder later on but um, yeah it's it's funny being so invested in it and knowing Helen for a bit because she's just like really funny and <laughs> she's it's been nice to to enjoy that process because we haven't really experienced that in our team yep. um, until now obviously Alicia and Joe in the future will we'll lead into that but um yeah it was it was interesting to see for us personally i, I loved what um the marketing around it because i feel like as a kenyan athlete you don't get that much hype mm-hmm. around somebody like that for a major like that kipchoge is an example that's kind of an outlier but the way that like because they had a mural of helen on did and then they had all these advertisement they had some videos from from citrus mag in general like i love the hype up for her because i feel like as a Kenyan athlete, I'm sure she doesn't, she's not used to it. So that was pretty sick to see um, for her. But um, I'm excited for her future with the marathon. I think that will give her the fire because she's a competitor at the end of the day. So I think that's what it is. Like she, I think she'll come off with an appreciation for it because she is a competitor. She's like so talented. She runs with heart. But the marathon is a tiny bit more than that. Mm. Like you need those things, but then you also need to be able to take on a ton of calories yep. and deal with some yeah. hard days. Yeah, and, and like I mean, I saw her after the race, and like she definitely looked disappointed. But I think, like you said, it's like when you're that good, anything yeah. other than winning is gonna feel like a disappointment. And like, you know, I I feel like I'm not someone who can like give her advice or anything because she's such a talented athlete. But yeah, I think you know, it's very rare that you run your first marathon and everything goes perfectly. You know, like that's yeah, I believe that by far the outlier um, and the exception. So I think speaking from my own career um you you just learn so much so quickly in the marathon and like you can feel like you're prepared for it in training but then like experiencing the race especially in new york where there's no pacers it's a hard course it's a brutal Mm -hmm. weather day like there's just so many variables and like to get everything right on your first go is so hard to do so yeah i mean absolutely i don't Mm -hmm. think she'll have any trouble in the marathon in the future but yeah yeah i mean and you talked about the importance of like missing one bottle right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She definitely showed some reluctance. Yeah, to, yeah. to yeah, even I, feeling. I heard she was yeah, just yeah. like that. She was like, I don't want well, to take it. No, she, well, Dathan like not not pressure, but like the feeling thing was important that she mm-hmm. wasn't like interested in it. But Dathan was like very very adamant about it with it, and she like de- like definitely understood that, and then started training with it. The same with like just eating, like yeah. just making sure you have enough calories mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I think you'd be good at giving advice. I mean, your your, your track record is pretty good, <laughs> Reed. I, in Thanks. general, like I don't think it's just you have to be the best. It's like you 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 learn and you get exposure. Like failure is just one of these things in in the sport where you learn so much from it and it just takes you to new heights if you can uh respond to it well so um but in general like I, yeah i just that was the one thing that i liked was um seeing her um go through it go for that effort and then hopefully for the next one we're just going to be so excited to see what she can do so mm-hmm. that's exciting for us and uh yeah hopefully she'll be back soon and she's quite yeah. fun to be around she's actually quite she's fun. awesome uh, yeah. i think we've heard that next time rich might make her train with us at uh, 8 30 yeah, in the morning you guys, <laughs> so, she had her own training partners right yeah yeah, yeah. she did so, she had the same thing where yeah. there's a bunch of guys yep, coming in and out yeah hours, i know so. chandler reed is one of them and yeah. he's like he was effectively my old roommate uh-huh. it was like christine my wife before we lived together she was living with chandler and so i spent so much time over there and yeah like i followed chandler on strava and so i was like basically seeing what he was able to do for helen yeah he's like Crazy. yeah i made it like 16 miles a day and then she carried on for like another five and yeah. picked it up and it's just like oh that's disgusting yeah. she's so good no uh, like she obviously is ta- so talented but yeah the marathon has yeah this is just these other aspects of it which mm-hmm. a lot of that will come with experience so yep. yeah and overall like really great debut obviously mm-hmm. uh the other i mean the craziest debut obviously was sharon yep ledecky he mm-hmm. came through for the win which is just like watching that unfold was just like kind of a bit of a disbelief which obviously in races often crazy things that you, no one expects happens but sharon is like she's been a really good runner for a long time but you know this was her first marathon and she's pretty young and just the caliber of people that she was racing against like she's literally racing against the best in the world right like these names are just ridiculous so obviously you're not gonna like think she's gonna win in her debut marathon mm-hmm. but the way she came through which ollie mentioned there was like a 5k where the top women were really pushing it and sharon didn't go with that and she came through later which i think was like i think that was a big part of maybe why she ended up winning just yeah. like she ran a bit more conservative that was just like the coolest thing to see that uh massive for under armor obviously mm. massive like, any brand that Your wins in your friends. Yeah. <laughs> Any brand that's not Nike that wins yeah. that. Oh, yeah, like, it's massive. Yeah. And if, I mean, 
<laughs> that's the first non Nike or Adidas world major win since. 2018. Yeah, there you go. Well, who was oh, the yeah, last? Who was Dez? And Yuki. Brooks. Yep, and Yuki and Asics. What I loved, yeah, I don't know if you were able to see it, but there was a, like a little reel of her. She was doing an interview for, I think it was ESPN. And she just like was in disbelief that she won. And she was just yeah, so emotional like, about it. She's like, you just, I'm out of words. Yeah, it yeah. just makes anybody cry. Like <laughs> it was just something just so beautiful about it. Like um, just the way she like just so, um, not not naive. I don't know what the word is, but she was just she was so very humble. She's very humbled by it. But like she just didn't realize because she wanted, wanted to crush it. You know, everyone wants to crush her debut. Mm-hmm. And she just won the New York Marathon. And I yep. think yeah. knowing like, because she went to the NCAA system. With yeah. Kansas, right? Yeah, she went to Kansas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what was NCAA what was it champ in the uh, ten k? Ten k. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now New York champ. Like it's just yeah. crazy. Like the story is just not. Nah, it's so cool. Mm-hmm. She's also just an amazing person. I really, she's so lovely. Yeah. yeah she's if you've nice. been around her ever, mm-hmm. I was with her just a little bit in Flagstaff. Like she's just so cool, so humble. Yeah. Which I guess a lot of the Kenyans are like that. Like they're mm-hmm. just yeah, they're so relaxed, sweet. so yeah. chill. You spend so. a lot of time on yeah. the road circuit, and they're all just like incredibly genuine people. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. Uh, Chez was in like the weed vehicle for the women's <laughs> race. Which is no way. Yeah, that's her partner. So yeah. it's pretty. Like I was doing my last like stride before the race, and I just like happened to like stop my stride at the car and i just like went to turn around and i just like made eye contact with Chez and was just like oh you got the best seat in the house man yeah, and then like crazy. not knowing obviously yeah. at the time that yeah. she was gonna end up winning but yeah an amazing result for her for sure and Haas was excited you could tell yeah. that yes. post he posted that photo of him just screaming like this you could just you could That's tell a coach as well like just coaching someone to debut win mm-hmm. yeah very very cool yeah so. Yeah, and coming off praising Shannon, we have to say a big fuck you to the New York Times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take down the New York yeah. Times. Because they released an article today. I'll pull it off my computer so we know exactly what the headline is. And this is just like the biggest dick thing ever. Matthew Futterman. Matthew Screw Futterman. You, bro. <laughs> yeah, so this is... So Shannon, like, she's got such an amazing story. Like, obviously, she's... I mean, she's coming over from Kenya. She's US-based now, all this. Um, like, amazing person. The article that they put out, which... I didn't actually look if there was many other articles, but I haven't seen any. Mm-mm. This is the so one that they put out. The headline is, running officials did not test long shot New York City Marathon winner before race. It's just like... It's such a dick headline. If you know anything about about like how this sport works and all that, it's like... When, like that's just the reality yeah, like, yeah. I've, like, been, I've been drug tested three times in my career yeah and two of them were this weekend in new york so it's <laughs> like i've i've been podium at u.s championships i've been top 10 at world majors and not gotten pulled for drug testing it's yeah like, and it's more just like the fact that that's what you choose to focus on when yeah. there's so much goodness and amazing stuff about this story and obviously like we feel very strongly about all the anti-doping stuff and obviously right now it's a very hot topic for kenyan athletes because mm-hmm. there have been a lot that have been getting popped but it's like man if you've paid attention to sharon's or you just did a little bit of research on sharon's story it's mm-hmm. like that's just such a weird takeaway and then like there's obviously like some big just inaccuracies kind of in the article like he talks about how when he's talking about her previous accolades he's playing her down a lot oh yeah for he, sure he doesn't even mention that she was an NCAA champion. no it's like she was like 25th and it's, it's like <laughs> yeah. well yeah and like a bad race for it yeah. yeah. least it literally goes from coming yeah it's like 10th or 15th in some NCAA race and then the next race she ran was this and she won mm-hmm. yeah. the thing like, is you, you did mention a- Morgan she has been like under under the radar a little she's bit but she has amazing. been crushing road races you did mention that she's been running since road she's races. been approached she's yeah. been really good mm-hmm. yeah. like, she's been improving a lot like obviously not like not still you wouldn't have right. thought still that she would have won the win, new but it's marathon. not like a yeah. the last time I saw her I spent an hour with her in post race drug testing in Boston after the BA 5k we should just come third and like the top three was getting drug tested and she just pretty much got off the plane from winning like the Honolulu half yeah the weekend before came to Boston top three in this 5k it's like she's been having yeah like yeah and then this the, there's a sentence in like the third paragraph that so or you know you're probably a minute into reading the article if you actually read the article and not just the headline and that says there's nothing to suggest that Lochetti violated anti-doping rules. Even it's just like, the, why are you writing the article, dude? Yeah. Like, yeah, even the way baseless. That, even the way that you put that sentence in there, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's like not you satisfying. Yeah, with that, if anything. You know, if you're going to write this story, just be like, let me start by saying we have no evidence to support that Lochetti may or may not be doping. Well, because it's but like... But it's just a crazy thing in this sport that you can win and not be drug tested before the race. It's like, yeah. well, she got drug tested after the race. Yeah, so. I was going to say, like... <laughs> Who cares, you know? And just like every sentence leading up to that is just so like skewed in the bias. Like mm-hmm. he's saying like as a result of these loopholes... Like, as if, like, she, like, purposely did right, things to get not selected. get drug tested. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what... He, like, yeah. It's just really frustrating to... Yeah, for sure. See, and because you know that if you're a casual 
fan of the sport or even just a regular person that's decided to like read this article your idea of how like the sport works is going to be totally skewed so by skewed it. Mm-hmm. and you're going to think that this is really suspicious right you're going to think that right well, especially because yeah the women's winner in boston did just get popped and yeah so they gave the win to edna but it's like then edna didn't actually win right so it's yeah. just like there's already if you're plugged into the sport you're already kind of suspicious yeah. and then just and to create more of it well, it's just yeah, it's the issue great. with that too is legitimacy of New York Times. The New York Times oh. is like, a, like a, as an establishment yeah. compared to like other right, like news, Let's Run. Yeah, yeah. like if you compare Let's Run to New York Times, <laughs> and you're you're just a casual fan of the sport, you're going to believe a New York Times article more than Let's Run article. Yeah, hundred percent. Usually because New York Times is more You've weight in the it. name. Yeah, exactly. And it's just yeah, it's yeah. just annoying. It's just right. it is yeah. annoying, and it's, it it pisses me off because. You have she, to say if it's an American, if it's an American, oh yeah, or if it was not somebody right. not from an African country, mm-hmm. you probably wouldn't have that article. No, but that was not. so that was the comparison that we brought up before mm-hmm. off air is that the reception that Molly Seidel got, especially mm-hmm. from the New York Times. If you Google New York Times Molly Seidel, there's like so many articles just like praising her right. so much, like mm-hmm. wow, like Cinderella story, like she came from nowhere to do it, and this one's like the way that the bias is just right. the complete opposite like yeah. she came from nowhere that's so suspicious mm-hmm. it's like, and they actually on. had a very similar trajectory like 10k NCAA champ four yeah. to five years ago right to yeah. then world major world marathon yeah, exactly. major breakthrough mm-hmm. it's yeah. just like, and like come on I mean, man pull the right about like stories. when Des won Boston you know it's like I don't know whether she got tested before the race or not yeah and that's very telling because there's not an article telling me Des mm-hmm. wasn't te- you know it's like yeah yeah there's it's just, just a huge amount of bias and subtle bigotry going on with it which yeah. is never great so Sharon just doesn't hashtag not good for yeah, the sport she overall yeah hashtag not good for the sport. sport sorry to Sharon because like you deserve nothing but we love you we love you at coffee club so congratulations <laughs> so yeah that's that so that's kind of like our whole New York marathon roundup Anything else that we missed from it, Reed? I feel like we actually did an okay job for once. Normally, when we talk about yeah. marathons, we know nothing. Yeah, that's why it's yeah. great to have you. Yeah, we can actually like yeah. make a discussion of it. So <laughs> no, it was good. Yeah, I mean, it was just a really again a fun weekend overall. You guys talked about it before, but it does just seem like the entire running community. You know, it's like this is the the celebration of the end of the year for mm-hmm. everyone, and it's kind of right before the end of the year where a lot of brands are making big moves to like hit quotas and. Mm-hmm. performance bonuses and all that kind of stuff so it just seems like the city's so alive with running it was yeah, a lot of fun to be a part of so hopefully we'll, we'll be out there some year and yeah congratulations again on the Thank great you. performance Appreciate the it. only other story that we really have to talk about is the brendan herbert <laughs> bandit, <laughs> bandit race situation which luckily george hasn't read the article on it yet so, so he doesn't know blind. So he's coming <laughs> blind it's like so, a reaction video now so this is what happened and to preface this I have run with this Brendan kid oh, you have? a couple of times wow, before because I cool. used to run with the Texas guys. And he is an interesting character, but I would have never expected him to pull this one out. And I can't tell, like, obviously I feel bad about it, but I'll, but just in general, like, I love kind of chaos. So I just love this. Like, <laughs> you love the chaos down. of it. I just love it. So I think, I think most people have re- reacted to this as like very, very like, this is hilarious. Like, yeah. this is the chaos. They love the chaos. But also some people are like, wow, that's a really bad thing to do. Yeah. So what happened was... Recently, this past week, the a lot of the states had their state cross country meet, and so high school, yep. high school, right. high school state cross country meet. And this, so this was in Texas. Brendan has he went he ran at UT as a sub four miler, and he's from Texas though. I think he went to a school there like Lake Travis or something in Austin, and he rocked up to the the high school race after he's not on the UT team anymore. So I don't know if he graduated or what happened, but he's like. He's like decently old, probably like 23 or something. And he wore his 2018 singlet with like his high school singlet with his bib on it. And 600 meters into the race, he just jumped in and just started racing it. Isn't and like that? and like took it out hard. Yeah, like it wasn't like he was just like, oh, like I'll just tuck in behind you guys. He was like, I'm, I'm he was going racing. for it. Yeah. He just hopped in and was racing, and then in the end, he actually came second. One of the high school kids beat just him. Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, also, I, just crazy. I love that. That's how it ends. Yeah, but he just, and he ran 600 meters. Like he like he what, just jumped over in. the fence. Yeah, yeah. just something so he, like that. He ran like a half mile less in a 5k race and still couldn't win. Still couldn't win it. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know like if he trains or anything anymore. Was just, it a practical joke? Was it a dare? Like, did someone dare him to do it? Like, we just. Don't know the information, right? Because he's deactivated his social. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it. Like I yeah. tried looking up on Instagram. I think he had it at one point, 
that I couldn't find anymore. Dude, what? it's just like the funniest thing. Ever. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> it's super Wait, bizarre. what's the what's the draw? There's no money. Like, no, no you... so so people are like people are like yeah, this he he, ru- he ruined like a lot of kids cross country race because mm-hmm. he had an impact on the race. And these are some kids who it's like this is their state meet. This is their biggest meet yeah. of the year. Yeah, right. and he like hopped impacts, in like college scholarships. It definitely yeah. does. And, and he, that he stuff. came yeah. in and like fucked up these kids like biggest race. Yeah. So that's that's just like. For- for shits and gigs we don't know, don't know. we don't know that's the thing like we don't know if it was a dare we don't know if it like he did Dude, it be- why did we not try to get him on the podcast yeah, yeah. Next well, <laughs> and there like i saw maybe some speculation that there was like he was trying to like pace for somebody oh or like be a rat like yeah, somebody be a was like, i do better when it's not sit and kick and so that's why he like jumped in and wow, hammered I don't collusion know. maybe it could be some, some, some insider trading going that's on. that's interesting I, I haven't heard that yeah uh, and i that was like a twitter reply i saw from like not a credible source. So yeah. What if he does the same thing at CrossFit? Yeah, he's in going to band at CrossFit. Yeah. 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 Well, I think CrossFit, uh, he can just, he can race it. Yeah, but he won't. Yeah. He'll still be able to hop in halfway through. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> it's his thing now, you know? That would be it's good for hilarious brand. if it started an epidemic of kids just banding yeah. in high school CrossFit yeah. races. If like you guys show up to the Colorado State meet. <laughs> oh, we were actually talking about it. Me and Morgan were like, we should wear coffee club singlets and just jump into the race. And get second, but then no. But the, the plan would be that we like try and like sit on the kids and then just try and outkick him at the end, but then fall over and then well, they just cross yeah. the line and well, then they just I don't mean, have an effect you know, on the with race. With the Niwa yeah. kids, you, I don't, you might not outkick him. No, 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 no probably no. not. Yeah, not those, the kids, those kids yeah. are like the I best in the country. I for sure would not. Yeah, they're, those kids they're like, doing uh, that mile with the boss. Oh yeah, team. that's right tonight, right? Yeah, yeah. We have a couple guys going to pace. They're running like a four fifteen mile is what they want to pace at in November in altitude, just casually at altitude as well. That's that's cool. My mile PR is four ten. Oh yeah, so. That's scary. Good for sport. Ben, or bad for sport. Banditing high school cross country. <sighs> well, people are talking about it. So, so any publicity is good publicity. I would say <laughs> hashtag good for the sport. However, <laughs> however, I feel like the effect on the high school is in their race for the state meet. Probably it's bad, bad for sport. sport. You feel yeah. bad but for those guys, but it's, it's so you, de- funny. you definitely just think it's hilarious. Like, I find it funny, but <laughs> the in memes. general. You got to do it right next time. So yeah. you just sit, you, go, you go, try go. and sit. You try and sit, and then probably won't be able to. But you try and sit on them. Don't try and affect the race in any way. Just, just be there, and then all of a sudden, just fall over at the line or something. Or we'll go bandit a turkey trot. Or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's, and Molly started dressed up as a turkey, right? Mm-hmm. That's hilarious as well. She dressed up as a turkey. And... That's really a random, different thing, but yeah. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. <laughs> pretty like, unrelated. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. unrelated to what we're talking about. Right probably now. yeah, it's pretty unrelated. But, but also, it's funny. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like just doing something like stupid like that yeah. at a race would be fun. See, the, the fact that he did it at the state cross meet is like what simultaneously makes it like bad but also just so much more fun it's like <laughs> it is such an important right. like race if it to do happened that. to me i would be like, furious yeah. but as somebody who is like completely unrelated Detached. to it I'm that's like, like nxn that was... like an nxn like so, so all of a sudden nico young puts on his jersey and just goes in and crushes everyone yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like what are you doing mate and then doesn't that deactivate social media doesn't say anything yeah, just Ghosts just goes and everyone's like what the fuck just happened yeah that'd be amazing i'm sure it feels like a fever dream yeah, yeah. it's like, <laughs> wait, like not, it doesn't even exist yeah that did happen? that happen or was i asleep yeah. i don't remember yeah yeah so i mean if you see us hopping in a race at 600 meters you know where we got our inspiration from yeah, yeah. when we're doing it for the memes sorry to any kids that we uh ruin your <laughs> your, your high school careers is upon, it, is it gonna happen well. you'll find out yeah, yeah. who knows who knows, who knows? But yeah, I feel like that's it for today. Anything else that you want to talk about while you have this amazing platform? <laughs> <laughs> this is no. Amazingly high profile, uh, yeah. Yeah. wide reach. All my hot takes are used up between cross track <laughs> and uh, banditing races. At this well, point. You know, next week is going to be our in sort of a latest preview oh, oh yeah get yeah. excited we got a big one week. coming next yeah. week we have a big one coming better start paying some attention <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta go, I gotta go I gotta go revisit the age old question of could our professional team yeah, be yeah. <laughs> we, we have that conversation every year <laughs> Honestly, it's always like <laughs> I don't know man probably not we had this question it was like okay like technically we have everything to lose they have nothing to lose they're probably way fitter than us at this point it just seems like it's skewed towards them just kicking our asses. So. Yeah, it's too scary to think too scary. about. Too scary to think about. But yeah, yeah, Reed, thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, it's been yeah. amazing. Thanks Congrats again. Me. Thank for you sure. everyone for uh, listening. This episode 60. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.